we would like to delve into this area. We've heard the story about um, one MPP, you know, big, big official, Hope Senadoya is currently in America. And we've had the issue with him and Trini Jonas. There's been, there's been this allegation that Trini Jonas is one, um, uh, one person, an immigrant living in, in the United States without proper documentation. And for that reason, it is alleged that Hope Senadoya claims he had visited his workplace and the gentleman has been, you know, um, sacked. He also claims that he followed up to where he's living and all that. But all these things, we've heard rumors, people are claiming his, he, he has no proper documentation, but we want to find out exactly what does the law say? Because so many people are claiming he's going to be facing deportation, he will be deported. Uh, I remember there was this lady in Ghana claiming that he's going to, she's also going to make sure that um, um, Trini Jonas is deported from America. Deportation laws, immigration laws in America. I just want to spend some few minutes on this particular issue so that a lot of people can be properly educated, not, 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 not to be emotionally involved and all that. So I'm going to invite um, I'm going to talk to a lawyer. He's the assistant prosecuting uh, um, attorney for Mahoney County. He's lawyer Ebenezer APJ, and um, he is a former immigration lawyer, and um, he, he has all this information, a lot of in-depth education. So I'm going to invite a lawyer so he should ed ed um, educate us properly. Um, can somebody just decide to deport somebody just because they claim they don't have proper documentation? I have um, lawyer Ebenezer APJ on the line. Lawyer, good, um, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Um, we are good, lawyer. Lawyer, um, yesterday I reached out to you concerning this issue. I've been somebody who have decided not to talk about this issue with Trini Jonas and all this Buhaha and all that, but um, there have been a lot of messages coming in. People want to understand, can just anybody decide to deport somebody? Can somebody just, you know, move from Ghana, come to America, begin to track down somebody who he believes is not serving his or her own interest? What does the law say? when it comes to issues with Trini Jonas. I sent you um, some videos of Trini Jonas, and I also sent you a video of Hope Sinadoye, um, who, who is one big wing in the NDC par and NPP party, the ruling government. And then um, I wanted to have your thoughts about it. What does the law say in this regards to Trini Jonas and Hope Sinadoye? Well, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Frank. Thank you for inviting me on your show and this this morning. Yes, thank you. I did I did watch the videos of this individual Trini Jonas. I want to make it clear that I'm not here advocating for Trini Jonas or advocate for the NPP. I am just an expert in uh, United States immigration laws, and I'm going to tell you what the law says. So whatever the law says and wherever it falls, your audience can take what they want to take. But let's by watching the video and watching the video of individual person that was talking about this Trini Jonas, like I said, as what the Trini Jonas video, he has the right to criticize whoever he chooses to criticize. That is the okay. hallmark, the First Amendment, freedom of speech is the hallmark of every good democracy. Okay. As much as I will not support, you know, maybe the method he used to criticize leadership, he has the right to criticize leadership. Let's get mm -hmm. to the law. So okay. Trini Jonas is a national from Ghana who lives in the United States. Okay. okay, according to the UN 1951 Convention and 1967 Protocol, it defines a refugee. A refugee is a person, listen to this, a refugee is a person who is unable or unwilling to return to his or her home country and cannot obtain protection in that country due to past persecution or well-founded fear being persecuted in the future. If the person had a well-founded fear of being persecuted in the future on account of one race, two religion, three nationality, for membership in a particular social group or political opinion, Asylum is a big area of uh, law in the United States. And because United States is a signatory to the 1967, 1967 protocol 
of mm. United Nations, they have adopted that definition I just gave it to you, mm. that a, a refugee is a, a national of a foreign country who is willing, who is unwilling, mm -hmm. who is unwilling to, to return to his homeland because of persecution, past mm -hmm. persecution or a credible fear of a future persecution based on the person we saw from the video I watched for that individual, Trini Jonas, he mm -hmm. might fall under, he might fall under political opinion. Since it looked like all the videos I was watching, he takes time to criticize leaders and usually political leadership. He may fall under political opinion. It okay. must not necessarily be also his own political opinion. It can be imputed political opinion. What okay. imputed political opinion simply means is that if he involves himself in maybe some people are having demonstration and he goes out to help those who are demonstrating, the government empowered authority can impute that, okay, you are against me or you are part of the opposition, even though he did not express himself. Mm -hmm. With Trindona situation, you can't, you ask the question, can somebody deport or will even America deport somebody because they don't have papers? United States is a land of laws. And we, the Constitution tells us that before you do anything to take a person's right, you need to grant them what we call due process. And those okay. due process applies to immigration law. Whether mm -hmm. the young man has papers or he does not have papers, nobody from Ghana can tell American government to, uh, to deport him. The reason being that if he claims all things being called, not knowing all the facts, if he claimed to have a, a credible fear of returning to Ghana for the sake of being persecuted, America government is under legal obligation. Listen to this. The United States government is under legal obligation because it is a signatory to the 1967 Protocol of United Nations Convention. They have to protect Trini Jonas whether you agree with the style of criticism or you do not agree with the style of criticism, American government will not let government of Ghana take him. It is not that he committed a crime that you need to be extradited. No. Okay. It, because of his political opinion, he's afraid that he go to Ghana and he's going to be persecuted. He's going to be tortured. He's going to be harassed. The burden is on Trini Jonas to prove and so I, since, I, I sincerely believe whatever those in authority or the people in Ghana try to do to him, they rather help in his cause of asylum. By the way, when I talk about refugee, I was talking about the asylum. So, asylum. Okay. Yeah, asylum is a, 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 a national okay. of a foreign country. Asylee is a national of a foreign country who is in United States or at the border of United States. Okay. So we do have refugees who will be outside United States, and we have asylees, those who seek asylum, when okay. they are uh, on the soil of United States or they are the border of United States. And I told you the areas they can use to seek asylum. If okay. they've been persecuted in the past from their country, um, by, either by their race, nationality, okay. religion, or particular social group. But I think today I want to limit our discussion on political opinion because from the video I watch, he may, I'm saying that he doesn't, he may fall under political opinion or imputed political opinion. Okay. N n lawyer, um, we saw Hubsna Doye, you know, saying, um, claiming that he, he visited his workplace. We saw him say that he's visited where the gentleman lives and he's giving the description. Um, watching the video further, he goes further by um, showing where the gentleman actually comes to stand, where he's been, you know, moving around and all that. Looking at the video, does the video merit under the 1967, um, the 1969 protocol to the UN Refugee Act, per the video, does the video have enough evidence for Trini Jonas if he decide to seek for asylum from the United States? I would not say that it would be enough. It would be more, it, it will, he will have to prove other things okay. aside just that video. But that video will, 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 will lend to the evidence of credible fear. 
if okay. a, a whole so that also it depends if this person who is a, a an authority or who is a, a member of the ruling party come to united states the question we have to ask ourselves is under what condition did he come did he come as a representative of ghana did he come with the president of ghana and was he in the cap was he in a representative capacity as a as a, a public servant from Ghana, if he was operating under his own individual, in this, his own individual assumption or his own individual effort, that would be a different thing. But it will be difficult to prove that because since he's a government official, it is difficult to differentiate between what he is doing as a, a private citizen and as a public figure. And because he's a public figure, any great immigration attorney can make the argument that he he came to United States. He claimed uh, he claimed in the video that he he came and went about looking for Jonas and trying to find out what he is doing in the United States. I think he has a credible fear of future persecution, which can lean into his asylum claim if he has claimed an asylum. And by the way, before you can claim an asylum, you have a one year window to to file for asylum or to ask for asylum so so if this individual came in the government capacity or not even the government capacity he make a good case for trini jonas mm. as an asylee in the united states and united states government will not deport him even uh excuse me to say or suffice it to say the president of ghana cannot ask deportation of trini jonas because he's insulting leadership in Ghana. First Amendment in the United States grant him their, their freedom of speech to talk about whoever he want to talk about. Despite despite his um, alleged, because we are we can't confirm whether he has proper documentation or, or, or not, despite the allegation that he is not properly documented, uh, um, um, documented to leave legally in the United States. Absolutely. Wow. The fact that he is illegal immigrant, if alleged illegal immigrant, and even if he's illegal immigrant, it does not guarantee that he's going to be deported. There has to be other circumstances, other factors that will have to come into play before Trini Jonas will be deported. Nobody would deport Trini Jonas just because he doesn't have papers. Like I said, because of United States being a signatory to the 1951, uh, U, UN Accord and also 1967 Protocol. United States will not will not under any circumstances deport the young man. You have to grant him due process of the law. Wow. <sighs> hmm. Lawyer. Um... <laughs> Well, for, for, for viewers watching us in Ghana and um, those here in the United States, I think this is a bit clearer. A clearer picture has been given to us by a lawyer. Let me, let me just give a breakdown of what the lawyer was trying to say. The lawyer is trying to say that by the uh, 1969 uh, uh, um, uh, Obligation Act, that is the protocol under the UN Refugee Act that you, uh, United States have signed, it's a signature to by this, even if Trini Jonas is not properly documented to live in the United States, he still has the right for proper uh, uh, due process. And so therefore, in no one can just decide to call for his deportation until due process is done. Again, by this act, America is obliged to protect Trini Jonas if he is able to prove that he is not safe or he faces political persecution mm -hmm. and his safety is not guaranteed, should he return to Ghana, America is mandated by, by the 1969 protocol um, uh, uh, um, under UN Refugee Act that US is a signature to. America mm -hmm. is mandated to protect Kenny Jonas. Lawyer, is that the simplicity of the issue? That is that is that is how simple it gets. And one thing we have to also know about asylum, the asylum law is the process, is that there are two forms of asylum. 
there's what we call affirmative asylum and defensive asylum. The affirmative asylum is where when you get to United States, you get either the border of United States or you enter United States and you decide or you claim to whoever at the point of entry that you have credible fear, that you are afraid of persecution, either in the past in your national country or in future, you're going to be persecuted. You are allowed to enter United States and you are allowed to apply for what we call affirmative asylum. You file that with the United States Citizen and Immigration Service. You file that with the USCIS. And when you file that with them, they will investigate your claims or your allegations, and they will approve your asylum if you have credible fear, if you have credible fear of persecution, and if you fall under the five categories, race, religion, nationality, a particular social group, or political opinion, if you fall under one of these or all of that, you'll be granted asylum. It allows you to work in the United States, allows you to work and stay in the United States without persecution. And the government of the United States will protect you. I watched the video. It is sad. Uh, I want your listeners to understand this. It is very sad mm. for a, a leader from a country, whether he came in his personal capacity or he came as a as a representative of the government, it is sad that a, a public official will come under the dime of a, a nation and spend resources looking for an individual. I don't know this Trini Jonas very well, but I can tell you this. It is uncalled for for a leader of a country to travel all the way to United States and spend resources. He can tell me I use the money out of my personal pocket. Remember, you, you flew under the auspices of traveling with the government entourage and you spend resources looking and digging into this individual's life in the United States. It is appalling, and that has vindicated this young man. As much as I said in the beginning, I do not know him. I don't support his way of criticizing government and leadership. But I will tell you that what that gentleman did, that authority from any people, whoever his name is, did, vindicate exactly what this man been telling his followers, many Trini Jonas been telling his followers how poor leadership is in Ghana. If a mm. leader spend that much time mm. digging somebody's mm. lifestyle in the United States, it tells you that our country has been given to people with no vision and no mission and spent on necessary resources on things that are not important. Freedom of speech is good for democracy. As much as we might not like it, we might hate it, we should allow the youth to express themselves. If we have a country that about more than 30% to 40% of the youth do not have employment, they have the right to say. And if he had a place who would protect him to say that, kudos to him. I wish he would use a different method of criticizing, but hey, that's how he feels to do it. He has a right to do it. Wow. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, we are talking to lawyer Ebenezer APJ. He is the lawyer and uh, assistant prosecuting um, attorney for Mahoney County, and he's a former immigration attorney. And he has the link to actually practice at the Supreme Court of the United States of America. He's very highly and very in depth. Um, he's, he's, he's more than a, an, an, an expert when it comes to immigration laws in America. And he has practiced and saved so many, so many people, so many people, countless from the South Americans to the North Americans to um, Asians. And it's, it's, it's just amazing the, the kind of revelations that we are having. So if anybody tells you in Ghana that I am going to make sure they deport Trini Jonas, I am going to do this, I am going to make sure the gentleman is brought back to Ghana and all that. Hmm. Lawyer has made it clear. No one in Ghana, not even the president, can call for the deportation yes. of Trini Jonas if... Yes. He is not given the due process. He must be given the due process. And if Trini Jonas is able to prove that should he return to Ghana, he is not safe. He is going to face some unfair prosecutions and other things. America has no choice 
but to protect him from such situation under the 1969 UN Protocol Refugee Act, of which the United States is a signature to. And I so hope, let me let I me hope, also let me a, I lawyer want to say something. Let me clarify something here. Let me clarify something. Okay. So the the okay. UN is a signatory to the 1951 Convention. Okay. And the 1967 Protocol, but okay. Congress in 1980 adopted that definition of okay. who a refugee is, as I defined initially. Okay. And so U.S. immigration law in the Refugee Act of 1980. Congress adopted that definition. And not knowing all the facts, from the mm. videos I watch, if the young man, Trini Jonas, is able to prove a past persecution okay. or fear of credible future persecution, okay. based on the videos he makes in the United States, which okay. talks about the political leadership. And he, I think he talks about almost every and any leadership in Ghana. Yeah. But usually what I watch was more about the politicians and what they are not doing, the leaders, what they are not doing. Yeah. And the man, uh, the other man, what is his name? I don't recall the uh, name. Hobson, but the, Hobson, Hobson Adoye. Mr. Adoye video that he also made in challenging Jonas or trying to think, exposing Jonas' lifestyle in the United States can play into Jonas' evidence proving uh, a fear of future persecution is a high standard, but I believe a good immigration attorney can make the case for Jonas. And mm. so based, yes, U.S. is a signature 1967 protocol. And also Congress has enacted, and because Congress has enacted the definition of a UN, uh, UN definition of a refugee, mm. that really secure Jonas. Jonas no matter the things he does, unless he breaks American law, okay? Unless he commits a crime, a crime that, that will, will fall under uh, an immigration act, Jonas can live here, if he is able to prove that, can live here and be protected by American laws. And when you become a refugee, you have a one year, or when you become a refugee, when you, they grant you asylum, asylum, you have a one year to file for permanent residency, yes. When you get approved for asylum, become an asylee, they will give you, you have one year to file for what we call green card, become okay. a permanent resident. After five years, you become a citizen of United States if you choose to be. And whilst he is approved for asylum, he can travel to any country on F except Ghana. There's an ex exception that I don't want to go into it. Even Ghana, okay. there's an exception. He might be able to travel to Ghana, but because of the fear of future persecution, when they grant you asylum, you cannot ask visa to return to the place that you, you said you were afraid of. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So, but she can yes. travel anywhere and return back to the United States. So I will tell you that Hobson, Mr. Hobson, or Honorable Hobson Adoye video really really help the cause of Trini Jonas mm. if he has filed for asylum or if he decides to file for asylum. Wow. By the way, there's also one, one year rule he has to overcome. Mm. If, okay. if he, he's supposed to be able to file for asylum within one year, he comes to the shores of United States. There's an exception that he can, you know, he can overcome that with a good immigration attorney. Wow. Lawyer, does this school of thought that, um, some people who are able to enter the America, uh, um, the United States of America, and um, by guidance of some understanding of what the law says, especially the asylum issue, asylum, uh, you know, refugee act, and all that, they decide to set one way or the other a trap, a trap whereby they will criticize government criticize personalities, individuals, and other things. I'm not saying that's what Jenny Jonas does. I'm only saying another school of thought mm. so that they can get these people to respond. And through that, they gather this evidence and apply for um, asylum. Have you encountered such a situation? Uh, well, personally, I have not encountered that, but that, that, is, that is what is going on out there. But one thing we have to understand is 
you have to understand that just telling immigration United States, uh, that you are uh, you have a credible fear or you are afraid to go back is not enough. The the person, the asylee, has the burden of proving, mm. okay, of proving that's a credible fear. It's it's simple to talk about it, but it's very difficult to gain asylum. There's a lot of proof, a sort of documentation that will not be enough. People come in here and start criticizing the government so that they, they they know that most definitely leadership who are not really astute and focus on mission and vision for the country will respond, mm. will grant them asylum. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Some may use that, but that will be fraud. And when immigration investigate and find that you your asylum don't have credible fear, then they will they're going to deny you asylum. They will put you through the removal process, and then mm. deport you if they find there's no credible fear. We have to understand that United States have a mission in Ghana, mm -hmm. so all that is going on. They also investigate back home in Ghana. Who Jonas sure. was in Ghana? Was he somebody who was doing this before he came to United States? Or when he came to United States, he started doing that. So all those things will come to play. So if you are listening to me and you are in Ghana and say, okay, when I get to US, I'm going to start making social media video sensation about this in the asylum doesn't work that way. It has to be, like I said, past persecution okay. or future persecution. So you have to you have to prove either or. They will investigate your background back home. You have to bring corroborative evidence. In asylum, your own testimony is good, but it's not good enough. It is You have to have corroborative evidence, which means people will testify on your behalf. You have evidence or papers that shows that this and that really did happen. So asylum is not something you can easily kind of make, make it up. I heard that people trying to do that, but I want to tell you as an attorney, if you get into that, you will be found out because they investigate very thoroughly before they grant you an asylum. Absolutely. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be having a discussion with lawyer Ebenezer APJ. He's um, the as assistant um, prosecuting attorney for Mahoney County, and he is a um, former immigration attorney, and he has the lead to perform, um, to practice at the Supreme Court of the United States of America. We wanted to understand, you know, this hopes Nado and Jonas Buhaha, and um, all these um, uh, allegations that have been leveled against Trini Jonas of not being, you know, properly documented to live in the United States, what the law says, how how is the law going to handle such a situation should it be brought before the laws of the United States. Lawyer Ebenezer Apiede has given us an in-depth um, education of how things are supposed to be done. So it means that if Trini Jonas decide to seek for asylum, by virtue of the video that was made by Hobson Abdoye, it's actually helped the cause of Trini mm. Jonas, but sure. he still has to further prove, he still has to further prove why he deserved to be protected by the United States. And by United States, by the, uh, um, the, the, the being a signature to the Refugee Act, the United States will protect Trini Jonas if he's able to prove that he needs that protection. Lawyer Ebenezer APJ, um, I'm not gonna spend much of your time. Thank you so much for this education, in-depth education. I believe that we will have to pick up the asylum, um, the, the Refugee Act, seeking asylum so that we can bring it, you know, proper understanding to a lot of people. Because I remember very well that this Trinity Jonas issue, you know, popped up. It's been running for almost a year. So many people have been saying, I've reported him to the, uh, to the American embassy for him to be deported. I am going to make sure he's been deported in three months. So people, so many malicious allegations here and there, but this is what the law says in the United States. So um, lawyer, before you leave, what should Trini Jonas do if, and the word is if, if he does not have proper documentation as it's been alleged, what should be his first step? And if he seeks, if, if he decides to seek for asylum, what and what is he supposed to do? So that we wrap up this conversation. First of all, if he has a credible fear, so sometimes because he's live here, he his first step now because he's living in United States, his first step will do the affirmative. He will file for an affirmative. So I think I said about two ways. 
You have the affirmative and we have the defensive. So defensive usually is for people who enter United States without documentations. They didn't have visa coming to here. But with Trini Jonas, not knowing him very well, coming from Ghana, I believe he might have come from the, the Honorable Adoyes uh, video. He came with a group of people. So he came with inspection. Mm. So as, he will have to alleged. first, as it's been alleged. So he will have to first consult an immigration experience, immigration attorney. That is, if he does have a bona fide, credible fear, okay, if he does, have, he does have a bona fide, credible fear of future persecution by authorities in Ghana or government of Ghana, or he does not think government of Ghana will be able to protect him from future persecution from either leadership or whoever is in Ghana, and he has no other country to go to, he will be granted an asylum. So he must first consult with a an experienced immigration attorney who will help him through that process. He will have to do the affirmative. There's one called defensive. Like I said, the defensive is for people, usually for people without inspection or people who file for affirmative asylum but was refused. See, this is the beauty about United States. Okay. It is sad that the, the, some of the laws in our countries and our country do not work. Mm. The laws work in America here. Even if Trini Jonas filed for affirmative asylum, and, and perchance, or for, for some reason, the USCIS, okay, mm -hmm. the United States Immigration Service don't find him that he has a credible fear of future persecution, and they mm -hmm. refuse him asylum as, at the affirmative level. They will send him through the court system, immigration court system for removal process. He will not be deported. What I'm talking about, you are talking about five to 10 years process. Wow. So the Jonas will be put through the court immigration court system and that becomes a defensive asylum. Okay. So this time he's supposed to, even though the USCI is denying him, he still have another shot to the, another bite to the apple where they will put him to the court system. That's going to take about three to five years. Wow. And when they put him to the court system, he also have another chance to prove that he has credible fear of future persecution or he had been persecuted in the past. So that give him another chance to also plead his cause for immigration relief for asylum. So when he get denied at the USCI, that's not the end of it. They put you through the, the, the court process, which becomes a defensive asylum with a good immigration attorney. And if he has all the evidence and document, the court can grant him asylum. And even if the court decide that, okay, you still don't have it and they want to deport him, Jonas have two options. Mm. Either he accept to leave United States voluntarily or he will leave involuntary where they will take him but what i'm talking to you about is going to take about we are we are talking about five to ten years and now they have they have something called prosecutorial discretion which means unless that individual case is 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 very severe united states don't want to spend resources deporting anyone and everyone like ghana will spend resources chasing after trini donors they wouldn't mm -hmm. do that somebody like trini donors a good attorney can say he is not a flight risk. He he has not committed any crime in the United States, and they can even put him on what we call administrative processing, which means they wow. can close his case administratively and he walk around the United States a free man. This is the beauty of America. Wow, wow. Ha, <sighs> lawyer Ebenezer APJ. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Ha. <sighs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, that is where we'll bring the end of our conversation. Wanted to clarify what the law stands between um, the issue, the Buhaha concerning Trini Jonas, uh, Hobson Adoya, and all this um, claim of him not being legally documented to live in the United States. And those who claim that they can, they are going to ensure that he's been deported and all that, he's been all those things. This is what the law says. Simplicita. America will protect Trini Jonas if there is an if. Mm. If that is what lawyer has, has explained, the if is everything he has explained. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Lawyer, thank you so much for your time. God bless. And we are going to get back to you and we'll get deep in-depth um, analysis on the asylum issue, asylum yes. area. And um, we are so grateful for your time, lawyer. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we bring the curtains down. We've been talking to lawyer Ebenezer Apierj. He is the assistant um, prosecuting um, um, attorney for Mahoney County. He's also a former immigration attorney, and he he, um, he has the leg to perform to practice at the Supreme Court of the United States.